What is the most mysterious book to date? Which historical manuscript to date remained undeciphered despite numerous efforts by historians, linguistics, and scientists? The Voynich Manuscript, which contains hidden texts and images, has been considered the most enigmatic book in the world since the 15th century. This was true until someone developed the correct tool, artificial intelligence. But what's so special about the script, and how did AI assist in solving it? What message has the manuscript kept from us the entire time? In the modern era of WhatsApp chatting, encryption is a familiar term. The chatting app encrypts messages you send to your friends so they cannot be deciphered by any third party. Encryption makes your conversation pose enigmatic to trespassers or intruders. You might be surprised to learn that the idea of encryption is nothing new and that our forefathers felt the need to keep the messages they exchanged among themselves hidden from prying eyes. Message encryption and cryptography were first mentioned in an inscription carved around 1900 BC in the main chamber of Khandamhotep II's tomb in Egypt. Throughout the inscription, the scribe substituted strange hieroglyphs for the more typical ones. The goal, according to academics, was probably to alter the message's form so that it would appear dignified rather than conceal the message entirely. But it continues to hold the distinction of being the first encryption method most significant early civilizations have some evidence of cryptography, according to historians. For instance, Kautilya's famous treatise on statecraft, Artashastra, outlines India's spy agency and even refers to assigning spies tasks in secret writing. Moving forward to circa 100 BCE, Julius Caesar frequently communicated with his army generals stationed at the front lines using a form of encryption. This substitution cipher, which became known as the Caesar cipher, was one of the most well-liked in antiquity. How does it function? Caesar essentially performed a shift by three ciphers. Each character was moved forward three spaces, so that character A became D, character B became E, and so on. The characters then wrapped around to the conclusion, thus A would take the place of X. The successive centuries saw the development of encryption and the transition to electronic transactions. The first of these electronic encryption devices was the Hebron Rotor Machine, which employed a single rotor in which the secret key was concealed in a rotating disk. The key coded a substitution table and each keyboard key press produced a ciphertext. The disk was likewise rotated by one notch as a result and a new table was subsequently utilized for the subsequent plain text character the use of letter frequencies allowed for the game's defeat. The Enigma, invented by the famous Alan Turing, which the Germans used extensively during World War II, is another notable encryption device. The Voynich Manuscript cannot be deciphered by any of the sophisticated algorithms used today. The Voynich Manuscript has been attempted to decode several times, but no one has been able to crack it. Because of this, the message contained in the book was hidden from humans for many generations and remained a mystery until the development of artificial intelligence. The field of artificial intelligence, or AI, is a relatively recent one. However, as you might have guessed, researchers have already used it for encryption and decryption as well as trying to decode messages like the Voynich Manuscript, which have baffled humans for centuries. Take a look at what the Google team accomplished with AI-based encryption and decryption as an illustration. The Google Brain team created a game with Alice, Bob, and Eve as its three main characters. Deep neural network powers up each of these creatures. The Google Brain's experiment was simplified, but it still says a lot about security's future, particularly in this day and age when so much data and information is transmitted via networks. In the future, cybersecurity may simply refer to an AI agent that is constantly battling to keep your information safe while other AI agents try to find it. On the other side, it means we can finally unlock the meaning of cryptic messages like the Voynich Manuscript. Then how about the Voynich Manuscript? Why is it so exciting to scientists and researchers? The story has a long history, but we'll start around a century ago when we first met Wilfred Voynich. The document does have his name. In a Jesuit college south of Rome, Voynich, a Polish rare book dealer, was sifting through dusty chests of manuscripts. To explore what he could enjoy, the Jesuits decided to donate some of their centuries-old collection to a chilly environment. Voynich discovered what he described as an ugly duckling while exploring. It ended up being a unique manuscript. 
He turned the pages and was drawn to the strange pictures and enigmatic symbols that formed a distinctive and unintelligible script. He immediately understood its value and bought the manuscript. It didn't take long for it to spark people's imaginations all over the world. The Nikki Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Yale University is where the Voynich Manuscript is safely conserved now. For more than a century, academics have studied its contents in depth and specialists from around the world have assembled for seminars to try to solve the book's riddle. However, no one has ever been able to decipher its significance. There are many unanswered questions regarding the book. Do the Voynich symbols in any way translate between languages? Or are they their own wholly original alphabet? Is the information simply nonsense? The book includes illustrations. What do they therefore mean? What motivated the author to pen the book specifically? These queries have only encouraged researchers to delve deeper into the book and look for other hits. Scientists have determined that the object was manufactured between 1404 and 1438 using the carbon dating technique. Additionally, evidence suggests that the ink matches that of scribes in the early 15th century. Therefore, there is some uncertainty regarding the Voynich manuscript's age. Although some of the extra pages are no longer present, the manuscript has 234 total pages. The pages feature vibrant images of a variety of things, including flora and herbs, zodiac signs, bathing women, odd tubes, a dragon, and their castle. Scientists categorize the enigmatic Voynich manuscript into six categories based on its content. Cosmological, biological, biological and balneological, which is the use of swimming to relieve health problems. Botanical, astronomical and astrological, medicinal and recipes. Statistical examinations of the manuscript's distinctive script have shown that its contents are not nonsense, contrary to what some people have been stating. A recent handwriting analysis revealed that there were at least five scribes and that they spoke at least two dialects. Without a doubt, actual language is concealed by perplexing symbols. The ownership of the Voynich manuscript has changed several times, including to royalty. Rudolf II, Holy Roman Emperor, appears to have been the first owner of Prague. According to the records, he paid 600 ducats to buy it from an unnamed owner. The manuscript was given to the judge by Rudolf, and Jack Abbas wrote his name inside the book. The manuscripts were acquired by Johannes Marcus Marcy, a physician and scientist, who sent them from Prague to the Jess Webb scholar Athanasius Kircher in 1665 or 1666. Rome hoped that Kircher would be able to decipher its code, but it was held by the Jesuits until Voynich purchased it in the 20th century. The Voynich manuscript was composed, though, when? Another unknown fact is that there have been hints that the location may be in Central Europe, but there's been no concrete evidence. Although Roger Bacon, a well-known Franciscan friar and philosopher, has been credited with writing the book, this claim has been refuted. On what language was the Voynich book based? A medieval North German dialect, Nahual, Latin, and Proto-Roman are a few suggestions. Anthropologists claim the book was written in a vulgar Latin dialect with an esoteric Roman shorthand, while other scientists proposed Hebrew. Researchers have also sought to identify the vegetation depicted in the images. Some claim these plants are recognized species from the time of the Aztecs. However, these hypotheses need to be verified, and the document continues to be as enigmatic as ever until someone completely and unquestionably interprets the manuscript's text. What motivated the book's creation? It's very difficult to answer the question because there's so much that is unknown about it. It could have been a piece of medieval magic, or medical treatise, a scientific article, or anything else. William and Elizabeth Friedman, two pioneers in modern cipher breaking, tried to decipher the Voynich manuscript among the many specialists who have attempted to do so. They studied various manuscripts during both world wars and used code breaker techniques to the manuscript, but they were never successful. When IBM's punch card tabulating machines were developed, a few people tried to use the technology to speed up their calculations, but they made no progress. Recently, researchers have studied the Voynich text using computer analysis, but they too have produced no results, unfortunately, leaving its mystery intact. So what do you think about it? Comment here with your thoughts on the enigma surrounding the Voynich manuscript.